When German physicist Paul Kuhns first observed the muon in 1933, he wasn't sure what to make of it. He showed this track that was neither an electron nor a proton, which he called a particle of uncertain nature. The newfound particle was a curious compilation to the otherwise limited cast of subatomic particles, but the ensuing deluge of exotic particles discovered in the decades that followed showed that the muon was actually part of a larger ensemble, but a few years later it will be discovered that might indeed be something strange about the muon. Who ordered that? This was the reaction, famous in particle physics circles, of Isidore Isaac Rabi to the discovery of the muon. Rabi, a Nobel laureate who helped America develop the atom bomb, was reflecting physicists' general surprise that muons, which are, to all intents and purposes, just heavy and unstable versions of electrons, actually exist. To an orderly physicist's mind, they somehow seemed superfluous to nature's requirements. Well, for several years now, it has been this unexpected and unwanted particle to discuss the world of atomic physics and to question the validity of the so-called standard model. Preliminary experiments had in fact shown that the muon has a magnetic moment slightly different from that predicted by the theory. An anomaly almost imperceptible, but that can be measured, and of which we have received confirmation in these days. The knowledge of how matter works is proceeding in small steps, and the latest results Communicated on April 7th by Fermilab, the main U.S. laboratory that integrates elementary particles, seem to indicate only one direction, that of a new physics. Necessary to interpret the evidence obtained from the muon G2 experiment, the results of which are not predicted by the standard model, so far the physical theory has been considered the best explanation of what happens in the infinitely small. Muon anomalies shatter the law of physics? The muon is a heavier version of the electron. It is an elementary particle that is copiously produced when cosmic rays, protons, and light nuclei hit the upper atmosphere. As we speak, and only slightly depending on our altitude over sea level and our geolocation, we are traversed by a few tens of muons every second. They whiz through the atoms of our body without leaving much behind, only some ionization trail mostly. So nothing to worry about, really. Furthermore, even if a muon stopped inside our body, it would soon decay. On average, we would have to wait about two microseconds for that to happen, releasing an electron and two neutrinos. Muons are electrically charged particles, so when they are placed in a magnetic field, they start to spin. Physicists can measure the frequency of that spin because of a phenomenon called precession, in which the spin axis of the particle wobbles slightly. The frequency at which a muon rotates when exposed to a magnetic field is determined by its interactions with other particles and forces, represented by a number called the g-factor. Using the standard model of particle physics, researchers can predict what this number ought to be with extreme precision. But in 2001, experimental results from Brookhaven National Laboratory in New York started to diverge from those theoretical predictions. The muons were spinning slightly faster than they ought to. At the time, the finding was not robust enough because it had a statistical significance of only 3.3 sigma. That is, which more or less means that there was a probability in 1000 that it could be an error. Generally in physics, we tend to speak of safe data only in the presence of a statistical significance of 5 sigma, or a probability of error of 1 in 3.5 million. To explain these phenomena and more, researchers have been hunting for new physics, physics beyond the standard model, by looking for anomalies in which experimental results diverge from theoretical predictions. And on April 7th, in fact, the muon G2 experiment at Fermi National Laboratory in Batavia, Illinois, has given as new result a value that has confirmed, refining it, that of Brookhaven National Laboratory, the newly updated experimental value, in fact, deviates from theory by only a minuscule value and has a statistical significance of 4.2 sigma with a probability of 40,000 that it may not be an error. In simplification, this happens. The muon G2 experiment starts with a beam of muons, which scientists make by smashing pairs of protons together and then carefully filtering through the subatomic debris. This muon beam then enters a 14-ton magnetic ring that originally was used in the Brookhaven experiment shipped by barge and truck from Long Island to Illinois in 2013. 
As the muons go round and round this storage ring, which has a uniform magnetic field, the wobbling muons decay into particles that smack into a set of 24 detectors along the track's inner wall. By tracking how often these decay particles hit the detectors, researchers can figure out how quickly their parent muons were wobbling, a bit like figuring out a distant lighthouse's rotation speed by watching it dim and brighten. With a statistical significance of 4.2 sigma, researchers cannot yet say they have made a discovery. But the evidence for new physics in muons, in conjunction with anomalies recently observed at the Large Hadron Collider Beauty Experiment at CERN near Geneva, is tantalizing. The results weren't statistically significant enough to prove that the standard model was wrong, but they were a cause for concern. Despite its remarkable success in explaining the fundamental particles and forces that make up the universe, the standard model's description remains in fact woefully incomplete. It does not account for gravity, for one thing, and it is similarly silent about the nature of dark matter, dark energy, and neutrino masses. Hey guys, hang on for a moment before we continue. Be sure to join the Insane Curiosity channel. Click on the bell, you will help us to make products of even higher quality. What are the explanations for this discrepancy from the standard model? Maybe the interaction with unknown subatomic particles from energy forms inconceivable today. It could be very massive particles with mass beyond the energy limits of the produced collisions, or particles so small that they have almost no interaction with matter. There is talk of dark proton or even a second Higgs boson. No one can tell yet. In fact, what an anomaly implies is ambiguous. There might be something not accounted for by the standard model, and it could be a difference between electrons and muons, or there could be a similar effect in electrons that is too small to currently see. The mass of a particle is related to how much it can interact with heavier unknown particles. So muons, which have about 207 times the mass of electrons, are much more sensitive. When a muon travels through space, that space is not really empty. Instead, it is a sizzling and swarming soup of an infinite number of virtual particles that can pop in and out of existence. The muon has some small chance of interacting with these particles which tug on it, influencing how it behaves. Calculating the virtual particle's effect on the muon's spin, the rate at which its hour hand turns, requires a series of equally arduous and incredibly precise theoretical determinations. If we can venture a comparison, it seems to be back to the time when, based on the orbital perturbations of Uranus, observed and quantified by the astronomers of the time, in 1846, Urbain Le Verrier was able to calculate the existence and position of a new planet that would later be called Neptune. Okay, but what happens now? We will have to repeat the experiments until we reach Sigma 5 and start thinking about new explanations. The hypotheses that arise are those that foresee unknown particles or forms of energy. The exciting thing for physicists is that none of these are foreseen by the standard model. We are talking about a new physics, and who knows which is not the one that one day will be able to give shape to the holy grail, the theory of everything. There are basically two possibilities, that of every mass of particles, which the LHC of CERN has not yet discovered, why they have very small effects and therefore difficult to observe, or a particle with a very small mass and which, like neutrinos, interacts little with matter and could be the particle of dark matter, the dark proton, which, however, has been searched for in other experiments and has not been found. The hypothesis that a second Higgs boson exists is also a possibility. More Higgs bosons are continually being sought, which could explain dark matter. It is a possibility on par with many others. But even if all these efforts confirm there is new physics at works in muons, however, they will not be able to reveal what exactly that new physics is. The needed tool to reveal its nature may be a new collider, something many physicists are clamoring for via proposals such as the International Linear Collider and the High Luminosity LHC. In the past few months, interest has surged around a muon collider, which multiple papers predict would guarantee physicists the ability to determine the properties of the unknown particle or force affecting the muon. However, even as many particle physicists are likely to be celebrating and racing to propose new ideas that could explain the discrepancy, a paper published in the journal Nature casts the new muon measurement in a dramatically duller light. The paper, which, with a certain perfidy, appeared just as the Fermilab team unveiled its new measurement, suggests that the muon's measured wobbliness is exactly what the standard model predicts. In the paper, a team of theorists known as BMW 
presents a state-of-the-art supercomputer calculation of the most uncertain term that goes into the standard model prediction of the muon's magnetic moment. BMW calculates this term to be considerably larger than the value adopted last year by the consortium, a group known as the Theory Initiative. BMW's larger term leads to a larger overall predicted value of the muon's magnetic moment, bringing the prediction in line with the measurements. If the new calculation is correct, then physicists may have spent 20 years chasing a ghost. But the Theory Initiative's prediction relied on a different calculational approach that has been honed over decades, and it could well be right. In that case, Fermilab's new measurement constitutes the most exciting result in particle physics in years.